Greetings! Here you see a couple of computers, one of which is the Compact Desk Pro EN. This computer has been working pretty great. Um, if you don't remember the specs, it has a 1 GHz Pentium 3, 512 megs of RAM, and a 40 GB hard drive. And I've also put a DVD RW drive in it. This computer works great. What I use it for, it, it I have a PCI Firewire card in it, so it's my only computer with Firewire. So I use it to transfer video off this camcorder, which it does a great job of. Uh, in the past, I actually used this computer to edit my videos, and it did great at that too. And as you can see, it works just fine running Windows XP. Not a problem, it's a fantastic computer, pretty punchy for the uh, specs it has. Gets around on the internet just fine, it'll even play YouTube videos if you ask it to. All in all, a great computer, and uh, these are very robust, very reliable computers, and trillions of them were made, so you can find one if you want one. And uh, if, uh, if you just need a computer to do basic tasks, or even more than basic tasks, if you just don't need gaming power or something like that, I definitely recommend one of these. They are a very reliable and quite small workhorse computer. And that being said, this computer is in need of a mild hardware repair. It's actually needed it almost since I've gotten it. This computer is on its second power supply. The original power supply I switched out for the one that's in it now. Uh, not because the power supply blew up or anything. There's the power supply down there. I now use it for uh, electronical stuff to run various things off the 12 and 5 volt rails on it. But I switched that power supply out for the one that's in it now because that power supply uh, developed a problem that now this power supply that's in it now has. And that is the Molex connectors have gotten loose, meaning that you sometimes have to wiggle the connectors on the hard drive and the DVD-ROM drive uh, to get them to connect. And uh, sometimes, I've experienced it a lot, I'll be actually using the computer and all of a sudden the hard drive will disconnect from power. And that is not good. It results in a blue screen of death and uh, other wonderful things such as corrupted data. And yeah, both the power supplies I've had in this thing have suffered from that. And so what I'm going to do now, the power supply that's in this now, I'm going to solder new Molex connectors on it. Now the old power supply that was in it, I examined the Molex connectors when I switched this power supply out, and of course I took them off and everything. And indeed, they have a really crappy solder job on them. Really weak Molex connectors. You know, they're, they're fine for regular use. You know, under normal use, a computer, you probably never have to switch out drives or anything in its entire life, so the Molex connectors are never touched. But for someone like me, who oftentimes has to remove and reinsert components for whatever reason, uh, the Molex connectors in these computers do not hold up well at all. Um, they're really the only crappy thing about this computer. But what I'm going to do is, uh, quite a while ago, I bought uh, new Molex connectors off eBay. Uh, what I bought was, well, I'll show you what I bought. I bought a couple of these. You plug your Molex in it there, and it's basically a splitter cable. You get three Molexes out. So I bought a couple of these, and they themselves were pretty cheap, and they feel a little bit nasty, but not like they'd fall apart anytime soon. So, uh, I bought a couple of these, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just take wire cutters and cut a couple of these off, just, you know, right there, so it leaves the head in that much wire, and solder these, and, and cut the Molex connectors off the power supply in the computer, and solder these, uh, in place of them. So basically I'll be putting new Molex connectors on it. So uh, hopefully I won't break anything. Um, if I do, I'll have to switch to my other camera because I won't be able to use this computer. But uh, it's a very simple procedure in theory. I should have no problem doing that even though I have horrible soldering skills. But uh, we'll see how it goes. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to shut this computer down and uh, we're going to open it up and take a look. Alright, here we are. So we'll open it up. Which is normally a two-handed job, but I'll see what I can do. There we go. No problem. This is the first time I've been inside this computer for a year, roundabout. So, oh, I've got wireless cards still in there. I might as well take that out. 
That's a, uh, I think it's a D-Link DWL G510. Worst PCI wireless card I've ever seen in my life. It's horrible. Just does not work. Causes stuff to freeze up. And uh, I think I'll haul it out of there while I'm at it. But uh, take this out. Lovely toolless modular design computer. There's my uh, Firewire card. Just a cheap thing from eBay. Works excellent. I paid like five bucks for it many years ago. Hard drive, my Maxtor Slimline. Uh, not the one I've had for years, that's now in the iMac, but this one I got at school. Traded it for a 40 gigabyte Quantum Fireball. Everybody in the world hates these hard drives, but I particularly like them. I've never had, I've never had a problem with them. So, if we lift the drive cage up here. We can see the Molex connectors. Um, hmm. This could be a little bit tricky to try and work out because how it's set up here is that this Molex connector is actually connected to this Molex connector which I've just noticed now and then get that IDE cable out of there get the floppy cable out of there uh, okay floppy connectors on its own that's good um, hmm. so yeah so if we take a look here you can see that's how the Molex connectors are set up and yeah see you can see the ends of the wires right there the end the wires don't actually terminate if it focuses the wires don't actually terminate at the metal contacts here the metal contacts are just kind of pressed into the wires and uh, basically the only thing holding everything together here is friction and that's why these wear out if uh, you put them to a lot of use like I do and yeah I forgot they were connected this way so what I might have to do is take the wire cutters cut them right here and then where's my splitter Ugh. take my splitter and let's see cut the splitter right here so it leaves this connector and this connector and solder that in place here so allow me to get my wire cutters so here's what the splitter looks like plugged in kind of a little bit of tension there but hopefully won't hurt anything so yeah I would cut it right here cut this connector right here and then solder these together so it'd work like that and it looks like it should work fine so what I'm gonna do is and actually uh, before I do anything let me plug the hard drive in and I'll demonstrate to you just how uh, how bad this actually is alright I have it plugged in so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and hard drive spun up but now I'll play with the connector and watch this yeah did you hear it turn off? oh now it's not coming back on so yeah it's really bad turn that off thank you so uh, definitely don't want to have to deal with that anymore and it's not good for the drives or my data either so get our wire cutters in position here is he gonna do it yes I will done so uh, how uh, compact does it on these power supplies is the reds your 5 volt and the orange is your 12 volt and so there's the connector so if we look at our new connector this way it's roughly the same reds your 5 volt and yellows your 12 volt hard to mess that up so what I'll be doing now is see that's good that's good I'm gonna take my wire cutters now I'm gonna go now that's done and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to solder that onto here and I'm going to use shrink uh, I'm going to use uh, heat shrink tubing as well so excuse me for half an hour or so while I get this all done ta -da, it's all finished now I did uh, 
face one obstacle doing this, uh, one that I didn't see coming, although I should have because I've had to deal with it before. The wires for the replacement uh, power supply cables are 18 gauge, whereas the wires that are coming out of the power supply are something like 14 gauge, so quite a difference in size. Um, which can sometimes be a problem when trying to solder them together, but I got them together nonetheless. You can see I got the, hink the, the heat shrink tubing on there. And uh, hopefully it holds. If my previous soldering projects are anything to go by, there is quite a possibility that some someday down the road these will become disconnected. Then again, that heat shrink tubing is pretty tight, so maybe that'll, so maybe that'll hold them uh, snug. But uh, at any rate, I will wire this back up, plug the drives into these, and see how it works. All right, everything's plugged in. Lower the drive cage, make sure everything wraps out of the way nicely. Ah, yeah, no problem at all. So, turn this around, plug it in, and see if it explodes. Now, I forget if I mentioned this before in the video, but uh, those wi those replacement wires, which I got off eBay, they themselves are quite cheap, so I don't know if they'll hold well over time. That's crooked. Yeah, these are very cheap wires and they might not hold very good, but uh, hopefully they will. If they don't, I'll buy better ones. There. It doesn't feel like it's gone in the whole way, but good enough, I guess. The hard drive one feels fine. So, let's plug it in. And turn it on. Oh, that's a good sign. Is the drive open? Yep, drive's got power. I think we're good. At least for another little while. Well, here it is. Running happily once again. So I guess you could call this a success. Like I said, those wires that I, uh, soldered on there themselves are quite cheap um, but hopefully they'll hold I have no reason to go inside this computer so the wires won't be disturbed very often so hopefully they'll hold and uh, if they don't I'll just buy some better wires and uh, redo it and I also took out this Wi-Fi card absolutely rubbish card don't ever buy one of these there's the model number horrible horrible wireless card I'll try and get rid of that on eBay probably. But that being said, there is the hardware repair on the Compact S Pro EN. Another success, luckily. So hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.